Hello and welcome to Wilson's Barbecue. In this video, I'm gonna be doing something that I've been meaning to do for quite a while, and that's to do a full review and tour of the Franklin Barbecue Pit's backyard pit. So I did a video a couple of months back when this pit first arrived in the UK when it was owned by Pro Smoke. I've since bought the pit and it's in my backyard. Go check that video out if you haven't already. Today we're gonna to get into a bit more of a deep dive, light a fire in it, show you my thoughts on how it cooks and how it runs uh, and a few other new things that you wouldn't have seen in that video. So we'll get straight into it. The first thing that we need to do is go and light a fire. So here it is, the Franklin barbecue pit. Uh, as I say, you may have seen a lot of this on my previous video, but I'm gonna film this as if uh, people are seeing this for the first time. So nice big smoke stuck on it. We'll do a quick tour. Um, so we've got the Franklin original designed uh, collector stack uh, with a bolt on um, stack on it, which is pretty tall. Uh, this creates a lot of draw and airflow. And we've got the tell truth thermometer there. Uh, Franklin branded and then coming around to the firebox side it's kind of dark so I don't know if you can see that the laser cut design here um, and as you can see I finished up with a pretty big cook last night so there's some ash in there I know I should clean it out and that's what I'm gonna do today um, real nice big firebox so let's have a look inside so there we go lots of nice fat in there from yesterday I'll get cleaned out today. So we've got a, about a 20 inch deep uh, cooking grate. Uh, I'll get the tape out soon and just measure everything up. Then we've got our uh, heat deflector, which also acts as a water pan holder. I like the expanded, expanded mesh uh, grate, which is obviously removable. Uh, and then through here, you can see the stem of the Teltru uh, and hopefully you can see that the grate kind of goes all the way to the end of the tank uh, which with that collector stack there moves the hot spot back. So we'll get this fired up just in a moment. Some nice wood storage under there. Uh, I've got my wood storage in a box at the moment so I'm not really using it um, and this comes in three different color colorways I guess uh, you've got the raw steel uh, which this one is and then it comes in two different types of coating uh, as an optional and extra so let's get this cleared out and fired up So one thing I'm not a huge fan of uh, on this firebox is the lip at the bottom. It makes it really difficult to scrape out all the ash and dust and that's kind of why I put off, put off doing it last night when I finished. I think a lot of pits like this have the same problem. It's not a huge one, uh, but I would like it if it was kind of cut out there so I could easily uh, brush it out. So the firebox is all cleared out. Let's get a fire going in there. So I'm going to be using some pretty scrappy pieces of wood to get things going. Um, I'm just going to toss some tumbleweeds under there. You can start to see the flames pulling towards the throat, uh, the exchange between the firebox and the chamber, um, which is really good. Kind of shows you've got nice airflow, and we'll talk about that a little bit more in a bit. You can kind of hear, oh well, I certainly can hear the kind of pull the stack but you can also see more clearly the the flames being pulled towards the opening which is a good thing it means we've got good airflow and this pit's not even hot so this has been going about two minutes uh, we've got a big fire in there um, so it's to be expected but this pits up uh, just over 200 maybe 225 um, and one trick with these tell truth thermometers um, that I learned from Aaron Franklin's masterclass is if you give it a knock the spring will jump into the direction that it's going. So if you want to find out whether your pit is um, on the way up or on the way down in terms of temperature, um, these things don't move too fast. But as I say, if you give it a little knock, uh, you should see it jump up. Useful tip. So we just got the firebox door um, open just a slit at the moment. Um, that is more than enough in terms of airflow uh, for this pit. It's pretty cold out today. 
uh, it's like minus two so trying to let as little heat out of here as possible um, as I say this is going to be more than enough airflow um, the cutouts here the, the plasma cut uh, logo has been designed specifically to allow uh, more than enough airflow even when the doors fully closed um, and we'll, we'll talk more about that in a bit but for now just trying to keep some of that that cold air out or the hot air in so we're still building that coal bed I'm not cooking anything today so I'm not going to waste too much wood um, but once this coal bed kind of breaks down and gets a bit bigger and we really heat the unit up the one thing that I've noticed about this pit um, is the, the amount of airflow so it's really easy to kind of manage temperatures kind of keep things steady I like to use small splits um, so this is just there warming up ready to kind of help the cold bed get bigger once this goes um, but I'd be using splits um, you know pretty thin uh, I, like, I like to add them little and often it allows me to really dial in the temperature and stay you know sometimes five degrees either side of where I want to be using the smaller splits it's a little bit more work but I prefer to do it like that it also means that I can run a much cleaner fire and with my neighbors being so close uh, having a clean fire and clear smoke is essential so with this huge stack on it that's pretty thick gets nice and warm uh, with the thick unit itself this retains a lot of heat and as I say the fire management on this pit is the easiest I've ever, I've ever come across um, just because purely of the amount of airflow. Um, once that gets going, we'll really start to see that. Also, some of the other features, um, we've got uh, what I believe is double welding. Um, I'm not a welder, I don't know much about welding, um, but some of the people I've spoken to have said that this is pretty, pretty good quality welds across the whole thing. Um, as I say, I don't really know too much. Uh, We've got a little flame logo on the wheel caster, which is pretty cool. Um, drip pan on this side, which is helping clear out some of that fat from those briskets I cooked yesterday. So just as we're waiting for the coal bed to come up, let's have a little look inside again. Um, I can fit three briskets pretty easily. Um, the one thing I would say is that although this is going to be super useful for the water pan and um, it does take up quite a lot of space um, I probably wouldn't want to cook this close to the firebox anyway but because that's taken away it's kind of frustrating but not a huge problem shout out to mill scale so also this uh, the raw steel versions of these come uh, pre-seasoned on the outside at least I'm pretty sure it's not on the inside as well um, but they they season it with some type of oil I don't know whether it's um, like beef fat beef tallow um, or linseed oil uh, but they definitely coat it in something I imagine Franklin has a lot of beef tallow uh, beef fat lying about uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's that. Uh, it's pretty good. This come, comes pre-seasoned. Uh, I've recently re-seasoned it myself, um, and it's holding up pretty well. I need to buy a cover for it. Uh, the one from Franklin is Franklin Barbecue Pits is six hundred dollars, um, which is way too expensive for me. I'm currently using some um, tarps, and it's doing the job. But it would be nice to get something custom made. So these measurements are online but I thought I'd just quickly measure it up for you so we got the firebox is about 22 and a half inches or 57 centimeters we got the tank itself about 47 inches or 120 centimeters and we got the stack on it uh, again 42 inches in terms of cooking space about 19 inches of cooking depth so we got 34 inches so 19 depth 34 inches and it's just occurred to me that I could probably if this was clean I could probably cook some steaks on that because that gets real hot this water pan comes with the unit as well nice rotating handle basically it's pretty solid it's really solid overall and in my garden it's kind of small um, 
fits nicely. It's a real backyard pit. Um, it's nothing more than that. It's a little bit small for me and what I plan to do. Um, hopefully I'll be upgrading to something bigger. Fire's just dying out now. Um, I'll be upgrading to something bigger at some point, uh, but I really wanted to, to use one of these um, because this is the closest thing that I'll get um, here to, you know, true Texas built pit. It's, you know, mill scale, Moberg, um, primitive, those types of cookers. Um, this is the closest I'm going to get uh, without going custom built from someone like Smokey Oak, who are the leading custom built pit uh, builders in the UK. Um, not necessarily in terms of sales and number of sales because they're kind of just starting to get going on on builds but uh, in terms of quality they're building pits that are gonna you know compete with the lights of Moberg over here so something that I thought was kind of cool that comes with the uh, with all of the Franklin barbecue pits is the uh, this little booklet um, so as you can see it's an operation and maintenance owner's manual um, get one of these with all of the pits every single pit comes with one um, they include the the body number that's the number that's on the plate uh, and the little signature from Aaron himself which is kind of cool um, so really this is kind of an owner's manual so it you know talks to you about how to run the pit safety stuff things like that um, it does have some how to cook guides in there as well so how to cook brisket uh, things like that um, I'll show the contents here. So you've got everything from the, the pit itself and you know how it works. Um, some really interesting stuff around the design of this pit. Um, there's some things in it, about this pit that I didn't expect, um, kind of how it's designed, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and you've kind of got how to set a wood fire. And this book is really aimed at people who maybe have never used an offset smoker before um, but even if you're you know well versed in, in how how to use one uh, this is it's an interesting read either way but it talks to you about uh, how to build a fire things like that link and log method so in terms of some of the more interesting stuff uh, in this book uh, one of the things is the way it talks about uh, the design of it and this bit in particular I found quite interesting so just one of the de design features is that the heat deflector um, which you've seen in the pit uh, has a bimetallic strip or a, uses a bimetallic strip um, and that is from what I can read here uh, a piece of metal that uh, bends uh, with a lower heat than traditional metal and what that does is cause the airflow coming into the pit from the firebox to um, kind of spin and kind of fly around like a tornado making sure that there's kind of chaotic air in there making sure that all of the all of the meat gets soaked and smoke and heat before it then exits out of the chimney which i thought was kind of cool a lot of people wouldn't expect from this or in, you know i don't know if that's a common uh, feature in a lot of pits but um, i certainly didn't expect it and it's one of those things that, that makes the pit kind of cool and different so another cool thing about owning this pit is it, that it is the only Franklin barbecue pit in the UK. If you go and watch Kevin's barbecue joints on YouTube, it's a great channel. Um, he sits down and chats with some of the kind of big names uh, in barbecue all across uh, the US, but mostly Texas. Um, he's got an interview with Stacey Franklin and they talk about the fact that there's one uh, over here in England and that's this pit. So that's pretty cool to have the only one outside of the United States. Go check Kevin's channel out. It's really good, really interesting. Get insight from all the all the guys in the, in the barbecue scene in the States. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I didn't cook anything on this this time just because I don't want to waste meat uh, purely for the sake of a review video. Here, but I'll be cooking loads uh, on this pit you know, going forward. Uh, this is my only offset pit now, so I'm going to be using this all the time. Uh, so you'll see me cooking briskets on it, ribs on it. I cooked a couple of briskets on it and the outcome has been great. Uh, it definitely cooks a little bit quicker than my previous pit, the Cactus Jack, uh, but overall they're fairly similar. Uh, the only addition with this pit is the size. Um, if you don't go for the 20 inch cactus jack here in the UK, uh, but also the airflow. I've never cooked on anything with as much airflow as this. The 20 inch cactus jack with the new stack uh, definitely uh, compares well. Um, and for the money, it makes the cactus jack a, a bargain. So if you're in the UK and you're looking to get an offset, go to Pro Smoke, get the cactus jack. It's a brilliant pit, but for me, this is the best pit I've ever cooked on. I don't have access to the Moberg and the mill scales. 
uh, too easily. So uh, I'm really excited to have this pit. I love it. There are a few cons with it. It's super heavy, uh, which is to be expected because of the, the quality of the metal, the grade of the metal, the thickness of the steel, and just how well built it is. It's gonna be really heavy, um, but it was pretty difficult just getting it into the garden. So if you're gonna buy one, make sure that you've got a lot of helping hands to help you move it from one place to another. The firebox lip, uh, which prevents you from scraping the ash out easily, that's kind of annoying. Um, I think that's pretty common on a lot of pits, but the, the pits I've had have, haven't had that problem, so it's maybe more frustrating for me now, having come from pits that uh, don't have that problem. And the other thing is the price, so it's obviously super expensive. Um, if you're in the market for one of these, you're probably in the States. Not too sure what the shipping policy is. I think Franklin Barbecue Pits will ship anywhere in the States. Certainly we had to arrange our own transport logistics to the UK, um, but most people aren't gonna be buying these uh, outside of the, the US. It's expensive, but as I said in my last video, it's, it's Aaron Franklin. Um, you're buying from a guy that's designed all his own pits. He knows what he's doing. He knows how to make a pit that cooks efficiently, cooks well. And there are loads of people out there that also do the same. But I think it's a cool thing to have. And maybe one day they'll stop making them or maybe they'll make them cheaper. Maybe they'll make them offsite. Maybe Aaron Franklin won't be part of the actual fabrication of the pits. So to get one now, whilst it's being done in Austin by uh, Aaron and his team, uh, it's pretty cool. For me, it's kind of a cool thing to own. So hopefully that gave you a fairly good overview. I'll cook on it again in the future and talk more about uh, its cooking capabilities. But for now, thanks very much for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Give this video a like, drop me a comment below. Let me know what you wanna know or learn about the pit in the future or just let me know what kind of videos you wanna see. Thanks for sticking around and I'll see you in a couple of weeks for a new video.